morning in Banff, a fishing village in southern Sierra Leone. In their long wooden boats, fishermen are bringing in the night's catch. Market vendors buy most of what the fishermen bring in. But as is often the case, today's catch is meager. These days, only smaller fish are to be had in abundance. Fish business is stronger to us. We, have, we don't have them big, big fish. For generations, the ocean has sustained their livelihood, but those times are over. The cause of the industry's demise is but a few miles away in the open sea. Trawlers from China, Korea, and Europe fish these waters day and night. Most of them have no license to do so, but disregard the laws and rules governing territorial waters, quotas, and the minimum size for fish. The stolen fish are stored on board by a crew of Chinese, Koreans, and West Africans. The crews are themselves victims of unscrupulous, greedy ship owners seeking to minimize expenses while increasing profits from ever-shrinking fish stocks. Nobody wants to speak to us. They are distrustful. Whatever can't bring a profit on the world market gets thrown back overboard, and that can be up to 90% of the catch. Illegal fishing like this spells disaster for the many fishing villages along the coast, like here in Bohol. Mori Jusu Kamara is the head fisherman and is highly respected by the locals because he has a solution for every problem. But the trawlers constitute a problem he feels helpless about, and this enrages Mori Jusu. I'll tell you why we don't have any fish. These damn trawlers. It's reached the point that we're living exclusively from small fry. The trawlers are ruining everything. They destroy our nets, they ram our boats, and they drive away our fish. We have no money, while prices continue to increase. We don't even have enough to eat anymore. <laughs> The fishermen's expensive nets are regularly dragged off by the trawlers. We just cast this net this morning, and a trawler has already destroyed it. Most of it is lost, and this is all that's left. I'll need a week to repair the net. In the meantime, I won't be able to provide food for my family. Sometimes the trawlers come so close to the coast that they become dangerous for the fishermen. The trawler came directly at us. We began to wave at them with our paddles. Watch out, we're here, we're here. But they just rammed right into our canoe and continued on as if nothing had happened. We saved ourselves by jumping into the sea. Friends who had seen what happened came and pulled us out of the water. This has forced many men to fish close to shore where they go after small fish with close meshed nets. They're aware that fishing close to shore will deny them their livelihoods, but they have no other choice. Local women smoke the small fish, which are the sole source of income for the whole village. The villagers are caught in a vicious circle. They need to sell enough fish to raise the money needed to purchase groceries in Banff. Without it, they cannot buy cassava, spices, and rice, which is the most important food staple in Sierra Leone. Sammy Coker is the doctor in Banff. He's most concerned about the skyrocketing price of rice. These are fishermen. These people go and fishing, and they have a small catch. They come and get a rice and a gari. Just imagine for the whole day a fisherman has been in sea, and he can only afford to have this type of rice in a small amount and a gari to sustain her living for the family for that day. And it's a problem. Because a number of 15 to 20 family holes living on this type of rice for the day is a problem. 
The food supply is shrinking by the day. The price of imported rice has doubled. In Banff, the fight for daily survival continues. Just off the coast, the fish pirates' cutters rendezvous with the legal reefer vessels and their large onboard refrigeration units. The stolen fish is then mixed in with legally caught fish to cover its origin. It becomes impossible to differentiate legally caught from stolen fish. The laundered illegal haul then heads northward towards Europe.